Welcome back for sadly, what is the final <laughs> installment of Saw in Review. For now, I have a feeling we will return one day for a hopeful Saw 11, Saw 12, Saw 13, 14, and forever more because i don't want this franchise to ever end everybody thank you for joining us for this i have been giving some false information though i've been saying recently we're going to rewatch captain marvel before the marvels that is not true oh. the schedules change things are a little messed up we're actually doing loki so next week will be the marvels and then the week after that is loki in review so nick that's a note for you. Make sure you watch Loki. Oh, okay. Weeks, cool. You know Are I mean? you sure we can't? You don't want to swap, swap it out for Gen V? Well, <laughs> I, I watched the hell out of that. Dude, Gen V. Have we talked about this on content yet? Not yet. Dude, no. it's so good. On the KF podcast, uh, we were telling Nick he has to watch Gen V, and he was like, all right, cool. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. But he did it in the Nick way that was like, he's never going to get yeah, to it. Yeah, never. He went home that night and watched seven episodes back to back. So impressive. Gen V is one of the, like, if it's in the boys' universe, if it's something that's like, like you know, close to the approximate of something that I like, of course I'm going to watch it. And I, I was just waiting waiting for you to be like, hey, we're either going to do something with it or not. Yeah. But I definitely wanted to. But it's also one of those shows where you're like, I know it's going to be a commitment. I know the first episode I'm going to be in, and then it's going to be a roller coaster of emotions. And God damn it, if it wasn't. I mean, it's so good. It's, but it's so intense. Yeah. Every Fredo, are you watching it? Not yet. I contemplated oh, it. I was really like, bad. I don't know. I'll wait to see what people say. But everyone's raving about it. Dude, yeah. So that's my list. It's so good. Tonight is about to be Absolutely wild. We're recording this on a Thursday, everybody. Thursday, November 2nd at 6 p.m. Equinox. It really is. Yeah. 6 p.m. We have Loki, the penultimate episode, dropping. We have Gen V, the season finale, and we have Invincible Season 2, the premiere. And then oh, just yeah. mere, mere hour, hours later, we have... Real Housewives Beverly Hills? No, that was last that night. We have The Golden Bachelor and Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, Tonight man. is going to oh. be so much TV, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to be wild. I can't <laughs> wait. What time should I come over? Of course, I'm Tim Geddes. I am joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello, everybody. You know, it, it does feel like this is the fitting end. <laughs> for, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, absolutely. By the absolutely. time this is over, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it needed to be over. <laughs> it's Christmas in November, Joey Noel. I can't believe it's November. I know that is oh, scary sucks. too. Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. And uh, as well at this table, we have the producer slash seducer Nick Scarpino. I'll tell you what, knowing absolutely nothing about Spiral going into it, boy was I blown away when Samuel L. Jackson I popped up. I, fucking know it. I was like, ah, uh, what? <laughs> It's so funny. You just would not see what that coming. What a complete and total waste of talent this movie is. Wow, I can't wait to get into is it. Is it a waste? Because it felt like he was in two and a half scenes. I think between Samuel L. Jackson and, like, the, there is a version of this film that has nothing to do with the Saw universe at all. That is one of my favorite films that I keep telling you guys to watch. And you're like, Nick, no, we're not going to watch that movie. Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson as father and son. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, I don't know how far they are apart in age in reality. Not, not, I mean, they're 16 years apart. Okay, so that's oh, really because that's, that's one of those things where I was like, no way he's mm. playing his dad. I looked it up, and Chris Rock is 58, and Samuel Jackson 74. But there's a version of this movie where Chris Rock is trying to solve a serial killer movie, like crime thing, and his dad's kind of involved, and it's kind of like it's kind of like movie. Lethal Weapon vibe. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, he was in Lethal Weapon four, but like Lethal Weapon one though. What's that? Lover. I mean, Glover was in it. Yes, Glover there's Lee Glover. Yeah. But there is a version of this movie where, like, where Chris Rock is just making jokes about Forrest Gump the entire time that works. <laughs> However, having said that, <laughs> this is not that movie. Yeah. No. The humor is so out of place. Oh, my this. God. It's so wild. Yeah, it really. I can't wait to talk about this one and round out the group today for the final time for now. Alfredo Diaz. Been waiting nine movies to do this. Yeah, this one. Hello, detective. <laughs> Dude, what in the world? Out of everything. I would like to play I, a game. I don't <laughs> hate it. it. It popped up. And I I'm like, it. Here we go. Here we go. So Hello, bad. I was like, what the what? I'm like, surely that was like a one off. Nope. Text nope. to speech just got the pitch a little bit. The worst. Like, do you think that they did it as placeholder and then just ran out of time? I feel Very like possible. They, I, I think that they thought it was a good call. They're like, we're going to modernize this. There's like, we're, we're used to Siri. We used to Alexa and all this shit. This is what people are going to want. No, no one was happy with this. Between yeah. that and the little marionette puppet, this the, is the dumbest thing I've seen in a pig? really long time. Yeah, the pig oh, marionette. That's so stupid. 
<laughs> all of them. It's like uh, they, the rise with the gun. <laughs> oh they really God. thought they did something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? They're like, They're like yeah. Dude. Like my problem with this movie is it really thinks it's saying something, it really and does. it really thinks it's like woke as shit and like against pol police brutality and like fuck cops. It just comes off as just wrong. Like yeah. it just misses the mark for any message it was trying to get across. Like, ah, we're gonna get into it, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, for the next while here. This is kind of funny's in review. Each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. Like I was saying earlier, we're ending Saw now. We're gonna return to the MCU where it all began uh next week with the Marvels and the following week with loki season two uh so you can check that out um after that we're gonna have to figure out what we're doing i'm not exactly sure there's a, a couple weeks that are weird with thanksgiving and some things but uh I, I don't know. We might be heading to a certain chocolate factory. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> oh I'll take that. Oh, sure. That is wild. But I've never seen the Johnny Depp one, so <laughs> so we'll see. Oh, 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 <laughs> musical numbers in there that yeah. are just something. I'll just never forget my friend being like, dude, my my uh, housekeeper looks like the Oompa Loompas in the Johnny Depp movie. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll ever remember about that movie. Because I've ever seen him and be like, oh my God, it does look like the Oompa <laughs> Deep Roy, is, I believe the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Terrible you gotta movie. love so it. many of them. Yeah. Of course, you could watch this on youtube.com slash kindoffunny or roosterteeth.com. You could also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny in Review, and we will be right there for you. Um, Willy Wonka, or Charlie? No, Willy Charlie Wonka. and the Chocolate Factory is the, the first one. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Charlie and Chocolate the, it is like, is it legitimately one of the best movies of Gene all Wilder? time? Gene Wilder? Yeah, it's, it's yeah I think good. so, yeah. Okay. So Gene Wilder's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Okay, yeah. Charlie yeah. and the Chocolate Factory is the name of the book, and I think it's the name of the Johnny Depp movie. There it is. <laughs> Yeah. There's oh. my there's my friend's housekeeper. <laughs> that's called Willy Wonka yeah. and the Fuck Chocolate you. Factory. That's an Oompa Loompa. Yeah, I, that's no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because I mean, orange. in the first one they're orange. Yeah. Well, I know. Yeah, that's what I expected. That's, that's the Oompa. That's just orange the dude. With green hair, right? That's the way the Oompa Loompas look. I think I believe Deep Roy. If we look up the Wikipedia Deep Roy, Deep Roy is a is a he's dwarf. a very popular. Yeah, but he's like a. Uh, I think he's a Bollywood actor, possibly. Or yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. It's we, it's, it's yeah. a weird movie. Well, we, um, we might find out next month. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the original, the 1971 film with Gene Wilder was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And Gene Wilder's like Maybe fucking sure phenomenal in that Amazing. movie. I mean, that yeah. movie, Whoa, I remember so it being so damn good. I just, is it one of those things of my childhood? I'm like, oh, this is the best movie ever? Or is it actually? No, it's. Legitimately good. Yeah, I think it's very. There are some things that are like real weird about it, but we'll get to that. I'm <laughs> oh, you mean like fucking Grandpa Joe not wanting to leave his bed until there's the possibility <laughs> of like eating chocolate at a factory? It's like, motherfucker, you could have gotten out of bed this whole time. Oh yeah, that's the that's the best. I <laughs> love those. It wasn't like that. I love they those. Got in the so video excited. essays. <laughs> I love that we're already going to get to Wonka lore. Uh, uh, yeah. Good Lord. Uh, anyways, today we're brought to you by BetterHelp. We'll get to that later. You can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to be a Patreon producer, just like Nathan Lamothe, James Hastings, and Casey Andrew have done. They don't need to hear the ads. Everyone else does. Let's get right into it. We're talking about Spiral from the book of Saw. It is a spinoff, but it's still very much in the universe. It's just... What a dumb name. A weird amount of time later. I hate the name. I hate everything. <laughs> yeah, I don't really? hate the name. Really? Yeah, I think Spiral... I mean... If you were going to do a spin-off series, no pun intended, of of Saw and having it be Spiral, Spiral's rad. But, but from the book of Saw. That's dumb. But the, the, the word spiral is cool. Yeah. How they use the word, though, and what it means in this makes absolutely no sense. There's a part at the end of it where Max is like, that's why I chose the spiral. It's the signal of evolution, of change, of progress. I was like, that's no. not that. Mm -mm. When something's spiraling, it's usually out of control. Yeah. Right? This makes no fucking sense. This would have been weird. a lot cooler if it was. Um, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of um, Bruce Willis's Unbreakable. How you didn't know that the universe from the other movie was tied into it. Like if this was a movie that we didn't know. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. This whole split. You know, you're uh, talking unbreakable about split. thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Split, split. That would have yeah, been split. really damn sick. cool if there was some twist at the end that kind of you know mm -hmm. unveiled that. But yeah. Yeah. But then they wouldn't be able like... to say Jigsaw 45 times. In the, yeah. Yeah. This whole time it just minutes. kind of felt like. This is an, un, an unlicensed fan project. A hundred percent. All right, so getting into it, this is Spiral from the Book of Saw. Chris Rock was a big fan of the franchise and pitched the idea to Lionsgate. As a result, they're just like, fuck it, go for it. Uh, they made him one of the lead actors, a co-writer, and executive producer of this film. 
Uh, it had a run time of one hour and 33 minutes. Um, it was directed by Darren Lynn Bousman, who did Saw 1, 2, 3, and 4, making his return to this. Oh, wow. Which I find kind of hard to believe, Yeah, if I'm being yeah. honest. It feels similar at all. Yeah. Shout out to the color grading, though. They, they tried. The last movie yeah. could have, you know, definitely helped or, you know, would have been assisted with some sort of color grading at all. And this one, it, it looked kind of grimy in moments. And I was like, oh, good. They're capturing the look of it, at least. This kind of looks like a Saw movie and not just like stock footage. Yeah. Um, and according to the director, there was a lot cut from this movie. So like the final thing we saw is Ooh. just kind of like them doing their best to put something together that had a short runtime. Um, there was a, a couple different traps that got cut, one involving someone's face getting cut off because they were like, they can't get it to an R rating. It was like too, too much. So they had to cut it. And uh, the director's really upset because they said that it kind of uh, ruined the story. Oh, um, which is. Oh, that ruined moment. the story. Oh. That? Yeah. Ruined. That was the thing. That was the pivotal thing that ruined the I story. I don't know. Um, it Not was the lack of story. Originally scheduled to be released in May 2020. But then the pandemic happened, so it got pushed back to May 14th, 2021. I think this was the first movie that I saw in theaters after. Man, you like risked the it. Started. You really did. It you fucking spiral, risked dude. it, dude. Yeah. It was me and James Burke alone in the theater. Oh, okay? my God. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Watching was it worth, I know there's was a it worth your sense of, Yo. <laughs> 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 you guys yeah, see the giant? For fucking spiral, baby. Um, so, yeah, it ended up coming out May 14th, 2021. May 14th. May. Why are we putting out horror movies? If it's May? Halloween, it must be Saw. May 14th. Yeah, but that's Weird. like, come on. That, they just needed their money. Lionsgate was like, we are, we're selling sugar packets yeah. from, the, from the, you know, <laughs> the cafeteria right now to stay alive. Yeah, they needed their money. Um, was unfortunately, this the first one it did not come. Have the like twisted metal. Like twisted intro? pictures. Twisted pictures. I think this had it, yeah. didn't it? It had it. Didn't have the. It was twisted pictures. Wire. It didn't have the gears. Oh, yeah. okay. I think so it was spelled. I don't think it had the barbed wire either. Yeah. Um, this one had a budget. <laughs> Do you want to guess what the budget is of this one? I'm gonna guess fifty million dollars. No, 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 no. Ten million dollars. So all the Saw movies are around ten. Like before this, the highest this budget twenty five was thirteen. The highest was thirteen. This, this is twenty five. It's probably like twenty. Yeah, I was gonna 20. say. 20 million dollar budget. Eight million of that went to Samuel L. Jackson and Chris Rock, and they're laughing their way to the bank. Yeah. 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 So um the Saw movies tend to make between I'd say 130 and 170 million dollars off of 10 million dollar budget. So that's a Damn. major success. The lowest performing one was at uh 69 million, um, which was uh Saw Six, and that mm. was because of paranormal activity. Oh. That's right. But they remember Saw 3D came yeah. back, crushed it. Jigsaw did pretty well, whatever. This one, 43. 20. Box office, 40.6. Oh, I was so Ooh. close. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, again, how much of that's pandemic? Yeah. How much exactly. of that's A lot of factors still deemed a success. So rough. I think so, this, I think had this movie come out during normal time, I think it would have I think it would have done differently too. Yeah, like given the context of the time period and everything, and this was in theaters exclusively for like a week yeah. before it came to streaming. So like a oh. lot of factors there, but um, um, overall they look at it as a success. They greenlit a sequel, but it didn't happen. So there was going to be a spiral oh. too, um, but so far it hasn't. Uh, Happen instead. Do, do you think it's because they're sending Chris Rock to acting lessons for the next <sighs> few years? I don't know, man. I really don't know. Think Chris Rock is in dude, a spiral too. Dude, yeah, the number of shots of Chris Rock just like staring into the void, <laughs> and shaking a little. Lock it. I'm like, wow. I, with I, his I, eyes kind of like closing from the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like just the bottom. Yeah, of he was like, that's what good actors do. Yeah, yeah. yeah I gotta do the eyes. My brother was like, hey, when are you gonna watch the one with the music from Twenty One Savage? And I was like, oh, that that's fine. That's way later. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. Credits. <laughs> and he was like, oh yeah, like is it in the movie? I'm like, no, 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 no. Like it, it's just the soundtrack. Like it's just like the, the you buy the CD, but like it was actually in the movie can you fucking guys imagine when i'm watching this movie and there's just rap music all over this goddamn thing <laughs> and then it, it, the credits music is like over the soft theme and i'm like i can't yeah. even hate this this is so stupid it's all rap <laughs> but throughout like, the movie 21 what? savage is everywhere it's so fucking funny and so out of place like the scene with it's... chris rock doing the whole like undercover heist situation oh my god <laughs> oh right what are right, we right. watching <laughs> um but anyway charlie clauser once again doing the music um which some some of it hits and god so much of it just doesn't no. the worst use of the theme that we've had so far and it really really breaks my heart 
But Nick, I want to start with you. What did yeah. you think of Spiral from the Book of Saw? Um, man, I thought this was a was a big old miss for me. Um, I think tonally, it's completely off with it. Chris Chris Rock. I love Chris Rock. I love him as a comic. Uh, I, I love him when he's in funny movies as comedic relief, and I think he's got a very sharp wit. What's up, Big Miller? What is that thing? I had a meeting in the parking lot. I picked this off a of vine. <laughs> What is that? I, I don't know. That it's looks spiky. like a, tree, a tree's <laughs> testicles. <laughs> a chamoy. It's a, I think it's called a chamoy or it's related to a don't chamoy. Don't leave it here. I don't want <laughs> it. Don't leave it here. Yeah, don't, don't be careful. Hairy it's balls. Spiky. <laughs> it, you need to take this. this Where was oh, there a vine in the parking lot? The neighbor's yard. It was crawling over. They weren't going to come get it. Yeah. So you went out. down the weird where I clip my dirt nails. Thing? Yeah. <laughs> where you clip yeah. your nails? <laughs> no. <laughs> For everyone that doesn't know, our parking lot has this weird, like five foot dip that's just like a, a hill a to hill. to a fat dirt. It's a dirt hill. Yeah, it's a little dirt. I guess that's where Greg clips his nails. This was the solution on the kind of funny podcast for how to clip my nails better. <laughs> yeah, I just go out there and I clip them. I clipped them this morning. I'm lying. I'm dying. <laughs> Alfred, I'll send you one of these for your shelves. You weird ass. <laughs> I got a spot. I knew it was coming. <laughs> oh man, Nick, back to you. Back to me. Uh, I mean, the movie's not great. It, it, tonally, I think it was a, a misstep to put uh, Chris Rock as the lead in it because I just don't think he can carry a horror movie. I think he's much better suited for rom coms or anything that's comedic and action oriented. And like I said, I, I do think there was a. There could be an interesting movie here with him and Samuel L. Jackson as cops, but not when you shoehorn in sort of the the jigsaw esque horror por portions of it. Um, and I think the bigger sin out of all of it, though, is just that like the trap stuff, while interesting, feels very secondary. It feels very like oh, we have to have that in here. And there's even a moment where you see the death first. You see the person's, um, I think it's his fingers first, and then we go back and relive the trap. And we're like, well. We know that yeah. person didn't live, but like, there's no tension in that. Why would you edit it this way, right? Um, so I just feel like the movie is a little bit of a hodgepodge of, uh, of of components of the Saw movies mixed in with some humor that just doesn't work. And unfortunately, the whole movie just doesn't work for me. Joy. Yeah, pretty much. It This, I feel like, falls victim to the trend of the, like, time for a gritty reboot. It's like, oh, okay, you want to make this like a gritty cop thriller thing and it just doesn't work it it focuses on everything about saw that like nobody really cares about and not on the things that we actually like about saw um i think you we've learned through 10 of these movies now we gotta we gotta have some more jigsaw amanda some tie to them other than they exist in this world i think it's not working otherwise i think the traps in here are really really not good they're like I think even calling them traps is like a, a very nice compliment because I think, I don't know, uh, the way that those videos play out before the traps reminds me of all the times that we've sat around this table joking about like what jigsaw traps would be if we were to come up with them. And it's like, I have like one line written down that I'm sure we'll get to where I'm just like, this is terrible. Why are we watching this? Um, I don't care about any of the characters really. Like nothing about this. It just felt like a like a, somebody licensed the name of Saw movies and we're like, we're going to make it, but we only have the name and none of the heart. And it's sad and it's tragic. I do think that if we would have watched these in orders, I probably would have ranked Saw 10 higher <laughs> after that. Alfredo. This movie's terrible. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just really bad. Uh, like, I feel like there is a small part of this movie that like could have blossomed into something with the whole um, story, like backstory of Chris Rock, where his you know his dad was the head of the of the police, and then like he ratted out a cop and everything, and then you have this whole precinct that is essentially like turned his back on him, so it could be anyone type thing, and it just it just fails in every way, shape, or form, and like kind of like rewatching it now, um, and I was just like, man, it could have been really cool if they did maybe even some type of because there's american horror story and now there's american horror stories where essentially it's just like they'll have a season and every episode is a new short story and i felt like they could have did like did this because i was sitting there going the book of saw i'm like yeah they could have been different chapters of this book with different people and their different experiences and mm. that could have been like a whole new like set of movies yeah and, yeah just that would that would have been cool um, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that would have been cool <laughs> right off the bat like there's there's rap music everywhere 
it throws the tone completely off there's a ton of like jokes that don't land from chris rock uh the big twist at the end just doesn't land at all whatsoever now, it's now a sorry to be fair the jokes landed for me <laughs> i thought everything you said was fucking hilarious it just stuck out like a sore thumb in this movie it was just so weird to have that level of humor in it sorry alfredo continue please um yeah, it, I mean that's that's pretty much all I got. I, I like I didn't enjoy. It. I thought it was uh, like Andy said, color graded well. Um, I don't know why it was like Predator Two, where it was just like the hottest summer and like everyone was <laughs> that's just like, L.A. kind of sweaty. You know what I mean? That's just any anytime any anytime you want to visually get across that you're in like L.A. Is that that's where this happened, right? Am I did I make that up? That this was in L.A. or is it in Chicago still? Uh, uh, I don't think they Detroit. Yeah, I don't know if there was a location is. identity. Oh, really. fair oh. enough. It just it just seems to me like that's <laughs> the LA that's aesthetic. Yeah. Orange, dirty, yeah. grimy, smoggy, noir. Andy. Um, it's a weird one because I didn't like it, but I do think it's like too competent in ways to to be a horrible movie. Like I think. Even Chris Rock at his worst acting is here is better than most of the acting we've seen in the other movies, but it just felt so uninspired and so uninteresting, and I think it just lacked like a lot of personality. Um, and right right from the start, where you know when Chris Rock it, I guess gets summoned to the police um, after the whole heist thing, and uh, and he kind of like hits the window and he's like because nobody's on my side, I forget what he says. I'm like. Man, Chris Rock, you kind of killing him in this movie. Not bad. Like, this isn't, like, as terrible as I thought it would be. And then it just kind of, like, slowly degraded and got worse and worse. And every character that he had a back and forth with sounded just like every other conversation he was having with, where it's like, if I yell good, that means I'm a good actor sort of thing. Um, I would love to, you know, meet Samuel Jackson right now and ask him, what do you remember about your time filming the movie spiral because <laughs> i got to imagine this is one of those like when we talk to some of our voice actor friends and they mention working on that shitty game they're like oh god i don't even remember that experience like this just felt like a complete waste of time for you don't Samuel think Jackson. he remembers hanging from the fucking ceiling as a marionette for an entire day of shooting <laughs> i mean it just that's gonna be the worst memory of his life it's just it's it probably just two days of shooting total though fair enough. it he just seems so out part. of place and like i i don't know why i didn't know that he wasn't in this movie i guess maybe it wasn't marketed like that i just know that like <laughs> This felt like, Can't wait to talk about knowing that this was Chris Rock as a fan wanting to make a Saw movie, I thought we were going to get a bit more out of it. But the, by the end of it, it just felt kind of like I wish the movie was way worse so that I could have hate watched it and enjoyed laughing at a lot of these moments. But instead, I'm just like, that was kind of whatever. That was kind of five out of ten right there. Tim, yeah. how did you feel? Oh, I, I'm very much with you, Andy, on this one. I do want to say, women cheat in the daytime. You can ride a lot of dick before dusk. <laughs> you missed the best part of that, where he goes, did you know Pilates isn't even real? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious. Man, yeah. Yeah. Like Why is that in this movie? Is simultaneously a bad Chris Rock stand-up special yeah. and a bad Saw movie. You can, give someone, like, three, dang, you can give someone 300 Tuesdays, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make up for Saturdays. three Saturdays. That was a good line. I was like, hey, not bad, hey, Chris Rock. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's so True. funny. Like I, I feel like, uh, and Andy was like hinting at this a lot, but I, I just think like this movie is not bad enough to be horrible and not good enough to be worth talking about really like yeah. it, it just fails at being a saw movie like we've spent nine weeks now talking about saw movies and how they're special like we've never said they're good but we've also said they're the best thing ever and like it's because there's qualities to them that we expect and they just commit and the bad acting and the line delivery all of it is kind of part of it and miss jill just, and and then jill mm -hmm. you know what i mean not it's enough like, bad wig there's just so much going for it that like even the really bad ones like 3d it's like there's twists and stuff that we're like, oh, that's awesome. And it's fun to laugh at. It's fun to make fun of. And they just, they, they know what they're doing and they do it. And I feel like for every Saw movie besides this one, I would say, oh, wow, these are kind of like the best episodes of SVU I've ever seen. You know, <laughs> this I'm like, oh, this is just an episode of SVU. But because it is Saw themed, it I think is bad. Like, I feel like adding the traps, adding the constant Jigsaw references, connecting spiral to jigsaw is like there's so much iconic shit from saw that we've seen now like many many times that the spiral on billy the puppet's face 
isn't enough for me to be like, that's the name of a movie. That's the entire vibe. Especially because, um, because a fucking Jigsaw himself, I'm trying to think of, I'm blanking on his real name, John, John, John Kramer. John Kramer never ever talks about the iconography being uh, symbolizing anything the people's falling into whatever like it was never ever a thing that's what kind of annoyed me about it yeah and you know retconning is name par for the course for this right yeah like, the name of the game for this franchise but they just do it in a way that's not interesting and like the traps i i know it i, I feel like a broken record here in a in a weird way that feels like i'm applying different rules to this than the other ones but i'm not it's weird that so many of the apprentice apprentices whatever that we've had over the last couple of movies like there is no getting out of the trap like the trap is meant to kill like, yeah that yeah. is the entire thing this one felt even further into all that that like joey was saying the traps don't even feel like traps they just feel like elaborate death mechanics and in that sense they're not cool enough like no. they're they're not interesting enough the subway thing ripping off the tongue like there's interesting setups but i feel like the follow-throughs of like actually seeing the trap play out it, it might be the least interesting of any of these movies. Like mm -hmm. it, and that is such a bummer because Samuel L. Jackson's in this. Samuel yeah. L. Jackson is hamming it up in a Saw movie, and I'm not stoked about that. Something's off. It, I, think, I think the stature of their celebrity kind of also takes away from a it. A thousand percent. Like, I, in the same way that I would be really distracted if, like, Robert Downey Jr. was in a Saw movie, I'd be like, what? Uh, you're, you don't belong here in this world, you know? And... And I think Social Network Guy is far too competent to be in a movie like this. Like, I think he is a talented actor. And, like, like there was never really any line deliveries from him. I'm like, oh, God, that was, like, nails on a chalkboard. Like, and, I never had that really throughout this movie. And with him, like, being the new Jigsaw, like, that twist and the reveal of this entire movie building to it, of, like, all the lines he had about, like, I don't want to be your partner and, like, all that shit. It's actually pretty damn good. Like, it's, yeah. it's, I think, like, more than competent. Like, they pulled it off. It's just... Not interesting. It's not interesting. It's like, you did it. Yeah. Like, I, I, it almost feels weird where, again, this movie was, like, too good for its own good yeah. that takes away from the actual quality of it because now it's like, well, Saw movies have this thing about them that, like, the absurdity. This movie doesn't feel absurd. No. It, it, it no. almost feels I like... Like, because it feels so grounded, grounded. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it feels like some of the things are stupid as opposed to absurd and fitting in the world that they're in. Yeah, I mean, going back to a couple of things you said, like the traps themselves, we've had a couple of traps throughout the series where I was like, that's pretty brutal. You're like, you know, you have your traps where like, okay, you're, you're losing pieces of flesh or whatnot. But this one had a lot of them where it's like, oh, okay, we're just like create like you're, you're essentially these people are gonna have like major disabilities severing like your spinal cord yeah. your fucking severing spinal cord your spinal cord i was like that's like you guys saw that back hell. up though you saw that back up. <laughs> although <laughs> that's the extreme. first and again it is like it's not jigsaw right like you can make the arguments like well hoffman was out to just outright kill people um the first trap we get with the train and the tongue though i was like oh nice we haven't had tongue stuff yeah, yeah. The tongue, yeah. And the tongue looks we so real. By the time we get stuff. tongue stuff, it in no like, way, shape, or form like, looked like when Charlie Sheen's tongue got stretched in Hot Shots Part Two. <laughs> whatever. Sure it did. Yeah, 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 it was Jim Carrey's tongue in Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, <laughs> it's stuck maybe on that's ice. what I'm thinking of. <laughs> yeah. The big question is, where's Gump to? Everybody, we're gonna answer that in just a second. But real quick, here line. is a word <laughs> from our sponsor. Look, this episode's brought to you by BetterHelp. Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? I can't even count the amount of nights I lose sleep just because I can't stop thinking and my brain just won't stop talking. It turns out one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk through them. Therapy gives you a great place to do that so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace and it can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. You can make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kind of funny. Betterhelp.com slash kind of funny. Gum uh, two line was pretty damn good. One more thing before we start. I think what Andy said about that, like uh, the celebrity takes away from it. I think Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson 
always feel like Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson in whatever movies they're in. And so I think that distracts greatly from the Saw universe and being like, none of this makes any sense or fits with anything. Also, hey, Samuel L. Jackson, um, here's your script. And he's like, cool. I don't really do that. No, I don't do <laughs> scripts. I'm just going to say motherfucker every other yeah. line. Yeah. It, like, it's so comical. Actually, I do uh, have an, uh, a fact here. Uh, the director was unsettled while filming the first scene with SLJ, who plays Marcus Banks. He told the actor what to do for a shot, and Jackson said, quote, nah. <laughs> and added that he was going to sit in a different spot instead. My butthole puckered, says the director. Mm -hmm. However, after speaking to a friend who had previously worked with Jackson, he realized the actor was just testing him. Oh, he wants to play a game. Oh. Uh, to yeah. see if he was a filmmaker who would stand up for what he wanted. Woo! There are, there are a handful of actors that do that, though. And Samuel one more thing. Jackson. For a movie that has Chris Rock, who's a big Saw fan, I would have expected like a little bit of fan service. Yeah. And there was just really like none of that. Mm -mm. That was not funny. even the bear trap we didn't even get a moment no. of them being like hey andy here it is again remember this thing <laughs> you saw it in all the other movies <laughs> all right hit me with the plot song detective i would like to hear the plot oh no <laughs> wow <laughs> oh that's yeah. so sad before we start the plot live chat i have i have an assignment for you i don't think hot shots part do or do was what I was thinking about. There's a there's a parody comedy movie where Death tongue comes her, where tongue gets stretched oh, out really really far, and I want the live chat to mask? start spamming it. Does no, it's like a Naked Gun it. or yeah. one of those movies. I, it might be Hot Shots, but it might not be. I'm gonna need that in about. Could it be me, myself, and Irene? No, that did. I don't. Well, I, don't, I might be only saw that movie. I don't once, know if like Jim Carrey would have gone for two like stretchy it. tongue things. No, the movies. stretchy <laughs> tongue thing. It, you usually have a one limit per yeah. career. Let me know, chat. I need I need you, chat. Don't fail me, because I'm gonna need you in about three minutes to do this. What the fuck? Oh, is that's this? that oh, fruit that's the, that I, yeah, I think down. it's the oh. sour saw. <laughs> and I thought it was a chermoy. Yeah. Uh it looks more like the sour saw, yeah. yeah but yeah, it's yeah, incredible yeah. that you know what chermoy is. <gasps> Ladies and gentlemen, here's the plot for spiral. Here's the plot. I just found out Pilates <laughs> doesn't even exist. Which got a laugh out of me. But not for the right reason. No, but it did though. <laughs> Fireworks. A man. I laughed a single time. Yeah. Oh, I laughed my ass off the entire time, but only because I was like, <laughs> only because I was yeah. like, that is somebody. The duality of Nick and I. Well, because I just can imagine as the director sitting watching the edit, and being like, Oof, we fucked this up bad. This is a weird one. And then I saw Chris Rock, executive producer. I was like, mm. yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Chris, is like, I think this. Let scene... them improv. I think the scene after uh, mm -mm. this lady got hot wax melted over her face and they peel off her skin like it looks like fresh bacon, this could use a little lighthearted comedy yeah, afterwards. Yeah, Chris Rock. We start with some fireworks, ladies and gentlemen. A man in a hat robs a woman, so a police officer in another hat pursues him down a sewer. <laughs> there was a lot of hats. He gets a beat on the guy, but it turns out it's a mannequin, and boom! We get our first pig man. Pig man early on. It wouldn't be saw without a pig man. Uh, officer Top Hat wakes up with his tongue stuck in a trap. And he, Officer Top Hat. That's what I'm calling it. Well, I don't know his name yet. And I was watching this on Hulu. Even last long enough, right? I was watching this on Joey's mom's Hulu. Yeah, of course. And I, so I don't have the name of the character that pops up when I watch it on Amazon, which is a very good feature. Amazon, please keep doing that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna call him Officer. I, I know it's Officer Boz, but I'm calling him Top Hat because I just read it as it's written. Uh, Pig it won't Man comes much longer. So keep it. <laughs> Pig Man comes out on screen, and man, it just sounds dumb. It's dumb. Andy, can you please do the Pig Man voice? For I me? think Fredo did a great job. Let me hear Fredo. Hello, detective. <laughs> That's incredible. You could you could jump down uh, and your tongue will rip out <laughs> if you would like to do so. <laughs> Which like I get, every once in a while with these traps, you're like, all right, let's think it through. We put ourselves in the position. What would we do? Could we handle this? Like, how bad is this? Is this? And you think back to some of them. All right, cool. Chop off your leg. Horrible. I couldn't fucking do it. But like, whatever. I'm so concerned. Like, I don't understand. I've proven I don't know science. I'd be so scared that it would just rip out from the like from my butthole all the way up to my fucking tongue. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I don't know how long my tongue goes down, but I just imagine so, like, it goes all the way through. You think it's a zipper? Uh huh. Uh -huh. And like if you just, it'll just. <laughs> so Kevin, Kevin the, the situation was he had a clamp on his tongue and he was standing on like a, a, a apple box on the train tracks. The train mm -hmm. was going to come and kill him yeah. if he didn't jump off and rip his tongue out. Right, right, right. You know, 
I just I'd be scared it would like pull out my because Kevin, esophagus he, at the very least. Because Kevin, he lied a lot, so they were like, yeah, he lied a lot in the stand. Take take that tongue out, uh, or if you just stay there, you're gonna hit by get hit by an oncoming train. Right, and luckily right. for all of these people, both happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because they can never quite get out of the trap. And yeah. When they're right, when they're about to, the bad thing always happens. And it's kind of disappointing if you lose, like rip your own tongue off. And then get hit by a train immediately after. Like, That's oh, exactly yeah. what happened. What happened? Yeah, because what sucks is like he had to, yep. for that split second, experience the pain of the tongue and then got yeah. hit. Is it Men in Tights? Ladies and gentlemen, DJ Kanto has come through for us. It is Robin Hood Men in Tights is the tongue stretching tights, scene tights, tights. that I'm thinking about. This is a picture of it right there, Joey. Wait, it's very man, small. Wow, a callback to small. Saw. There you go right there. It's there him go, yeah. having his tongue ripped out. Oh, and perfect. it's Carrie Elways, and it's incredible. I love it. Thank um, you all. That was the first time I saw Dave Chappelle. This is also, this scene also yes, has same. the worst line of the movie, in my opinion, today. It is you who will also be railroaded. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we're, come on. We're going right? to run a train on you, No, detective. but that's, <laughs> what I think is that that is something that us five would come up with, which means it should not be in a movie. That is so something that true. I would say after Andy said something better. And then Andy, yeah, this, this is what this looked like to me. <laughs> Jesus. Without a tongue, you may never be able to eat another yeah, Subway sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I digress. He jumps last minute, gets splattered, all that jazz. And then I go, wait, Chris Rock is in this? That's right. This is the one. Man, he has some hilarious dialogue about Forrest Gump. And I think early cancel culture or maybe cancel culture there. And then he and his crew, crew go rob a drug dealer and they get caught by the cops. But guess what? Oh, is that you, Zeke? Oh, you know me. First off, Andy, if you see me robbing someone and you're going to come to arrest me. I'm ratting you we, out so fast. No, no, no. You're a cop. <laughs> oh, okay. You know I'm a cop. Yeah. Have you never seen a cop movie out. before? You arrest me. You take me in. Pretend I serve a couple yeah. of days. I've right? never that seen moment Point of Break yeah. or Fast and Furious. I at least need yeah. to shoot you in the fucking arm to show that you don't have to shoot me in the you, arm. No, I mean I would like to. No, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> really saw it though. Uh, this guy just blows his cover immediately. He's like Zeke, is that you? And he's like, what the fuck? What are you fucking doing, dude? So it's weird. I I enjoyed the like the cool little heist situation and them taking off their clothes and like switching into the suits, getting in the car. Yeah. Stuff. Like, eh, it was kind of cool, whatever. But like, yeah, it it just. It was so obvious. Like it just felt so like we don't need to see this. We know what's happening. Felt like an oceans movie, not a saw movie. Yeah, totally. With bad Chris Rock stand up. So, I saw right. I saw a bunch of road cases and I thought they were gonna take off the clothes and go on stage. Yeah. And I was like, that's weird. But that would be cool. It wasn't like yeah, that. No. Anyway, I, I will say though, this uh I watched this in theaters when it came out and that was twenty twenty one. I hadn't seen a saw movie before that what, since Jigsaw, which was twenty seventeen, and then before that since Saw 3d which was 2007 so as much as i love this franchise i wasn't like thinking about it that mm. much like i didn't remember i remember hoffman i remember not liking <laughs> him i didn't really remember who died when and like all the details that sure. much so in this movie when it pops up and he's like uh zeke i was like zeke oh i'm like oh my god that's from the first movie like holy shit this is all time he's together. a black man now like well what's what, what's happening here and then I, I was like oh it's zap zap was zap. in the first movie uh, so i remember zap. watching this in theaters and being like how what are they gonna they're about to do some crazy shit and then they just did it tim can i weird can i ask you what the theater situation was like was there a lot of snacking i know there's a lot of cautionary yeah people in there most likely was there people eating snacks and stuff in spiral yeah well it was just me and james remember so oh and, and, shit. and it was when the regal the stonestown one just opened up uh, like, i think it was damn. like good popcorn I, whoa, whoa, whoa actually crunchy we went to the it was the opening night of that theater oh wow yeah. spiral that huh. was it. That's okay. how you're going to open up James. <laughs> yeah. the theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And gobble oh, the popcorn. Uh, he gets arrested, and of course, then after that, he has some hilarious dialogue about Jamaicans, uh, but then they give him a new partner. Uh, it turns out Zeke's dad was a hero cop. He was the he used to be the chief of police, but then Zeke sn snitched on other cops, and they don't like him, and that somehow wound up with him getting shot. Uh, his new partner, Max uh, Mingella, uh, is very wet behind the ears, but he's super happy to be here. He's like, your dad was the reason I got into this whole thing. It, I mean, hold on. Like, First what? off, I just think it's so weird because I, I don't personally know like the ins and outs of relationships between cops and precincts and stuff. I just thought it was very weird that people were like, oh, you, you fucking rat. You ratted out our guy who's doing crimes. 
Like, it, it was just weird to me that the other cops are just openly being like, well, how dare you? Sh like, man, we're on his side. We were with that. We like that guy that he was doing bad shit. Well, they're There's, all doing bad shit. That's yeah, it just it was it was weird to because I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I know who Chris Rock ratted out in this moment. Did he was he, he ratted out his partner? No. Yeah, no. Yeah. But in that moment, I'm like, why are they mad at him? For this? Well, you just get a cry. It's the old trope of like, if you if yeah. you snitch on other cops, you're you're going to be a pariah in the department. Serpico started it right. Of course, the next movie afterward, the dark. I know Knight that continued with like, drug it. dealers. Batman stuff. begins, continues it with Gordon being like, I don't, I don't take the take, but you guys do what you got to do. Right. And he's like, more for me. And then he goes, strings. Like, uh, swear to me. Remember that? I do remember that. And he's like, swear my sandwich. Me. and the whole time I'm thinking. Guy's poor sandwich. This hot dog lady guy is getting soaking wet down there. Are you gonna buy him another hot dog, Batman? It's rude. Good point. I, it's been a while since I've seen this. For yeah. any of them, I remember this explicitly. <laughs> yeah, this is eating in the rain too. It's like, dude, you're getting water all like this. But on top of this, we also just have the world's hottest sergeant, colonel, just yeah. governor. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. It's just like what's chief now? Right now, she's the chief uh, now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just like yeah. it, Captain the, Angie, Angie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like Rizzoli and Isles, you know what I mean? It's like we we're, that's we're casting this person on a on a TV show. Uh, that's it, what it seems like. Honestly, that's what it feels. Again, going back to the SVU stuff, it, it re this one didn't. This felt too polished, like in a way that didn't feel. It was too grounded for the characters to be an act this way. Fair enough. Uh, they call out Zeke, telling uh, he calls out uh, Max on the ride there within his cool. Yeah, like, also, what? I feel like she wears a lot of tank tops, which doesn't feel like a. Very cop, cop thing to cop do. Cop in a sub. There it is. There's Spock. Uh, this is what we want. Admiral Spock. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Live long and prosper. <laughs> We get like we get like thirty minutes now of scenes of Chris Rock vamping jokes about why Max's marriage is going to fall apart. We see a picture of Max, Max's kid Charlie, uh, and then Max's uh, man. They, uh, they find Detective Fedora. I, I know body. we're jumping ahead with this. Yeah, <laughs> the fact that the kid is a lie is like the fucking oh. one of the funnier reveals oh in the soft God. franchise of like the fucking baby crying. He's like, yeah, I didn't even have a real fucking baby. It's just like, wah, wah, wah. It's like <laughs> you just did, that's unnecessary. Unnecessary as hell. A picture of the kid's all you really need. If you showed me a picture of your kid, we just met. I'd be like, I believe that this I is your child. You. Yeah. I don't need. Even, why would you fake even that? Even then, I also thought it was really weird that baby scene. I'm like, wow, you're really just letting your kid like. Cry and cry and cry in the room next door. You gotta, right let, now. You gotta let him cry it out for you. you gotta let him. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. Um, you know all your life, you let your baby cry. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're gonna shove a pacifier in your eye. The they find Detective Fedora's body in the train tracks. Uh, back at the station, Detective Banks, Zeke Banks, gets a thumb drive with a message from Pigman. They all are delivered in these weird powder blue Tiffany colored boxes. Which at first I was like, that's what I said. Yeah, they're, I was like, "Is that a Tiffany, Tiffany box? Boxes. Like, wh wh why? Why are they blue? I mean, look, why are they that color blue? I, I, I give this movie credit. I don't think it pulls it off, but I give it credit for them trying to. This is for the first time a new jigsaw, and they're trying to make new iconography. The little pigman marionette, the Tiffany boxes, like focusing on the spiral. They tried to reinvent it. They just, it just didn't work. I give them credit for co-opting the pig and having it have a double meaning of cops. So in that regard, it makes sense. One step, yes. We have we've gone the one step. It is very on the nose, but it, it but it works, right? Because after a certain point, I was like, oh, right. There, this is how they're tying this all in, and then have of course Pigman being a cop himself, all that stuff together. I'm like, okay, it's just not there's nearly some cleverness as strong in there. as John Kramer four movies in walking outside in a prequel scene where it's Chinese New Year and it's like the year of the pig, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna do. He's like, oh, thank God, God there's Chinese Jill New Year. Pig farm, so you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> So you're looking for the opposite. You yeah. want it to be just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel you on that one. No, no, I'm with you, though. Like, this should have been great. Like, there's so much, like, real shit. The pigs, the cops, everything. Like, the setup is there. I just yeah. feel like the follow-through isn't. And, like, by the end of it, I'm like, I actually think y'all did a bad job doing the whole, like, let's have some commentary on cops thing. Like, it's just. I didn't see. I never. I didn't see it. The movie ending. ends literally with him going down the elevator. That was awesome. No, it wasn't. That was awesome. <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's not, awesome. Dude, with all the SWAT people there. He got I away. Nobody shoot found him. him. <laughs> Nobody shoot that guy. Um, mm -hmm. Side note. It's non sequitur, and I apologize. But guys, you can cut this out later. Kevin, cut this oh, out. Oh, good. How confused do you think it, I would make Cool Greg if I asked him to bring me three unwrapped Reese's Peanut Butter Cups on a plate right now? 
because I don't want to make noise, but I also want a Reese's peanut butter cup. It's not the weirdest we're, thing you've ever. We're gonna asked hear him. that goddamn peanut butter sticking around in your mouth, sloshing around. Yeah, I digress. You were, no, for you were specifically podcast. told to stop eating on content. <laughs> That's why if he unwraps it, if he unwraps over six it, months, this is the thing. They also told me to stop. If I'm afraid of that, they told me to stop drinking drinks with ice in them. So much ice. So I started putting a straw in my drink, but I forgot today, so I can't drink this now. We also add stop eating Joey's snacks on our desk. I bought you more nuts. Yeah, but then you are eating the nuts that you bought me to replace I the nuts. The, that I, but there's Joey, more he nuts bought the nuts. Bought Those the are nuts. his nuts. These but they're replacing the ones that I bought, including Fredo. the I mean, peanut butter pretzels that, that are now mysterious. I'm going to get you more. I forgot those pretzels were yours. Fredo, we're on stream one day and like Nick's annoying me about something. I was like, why are you always fucking chewing on something? And he was like, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> the, the best thing, Fredo, was a couple days yeah, ago. Was Nick was eating Joey's nuts, her, her cashews. Mm -hmm. and it's phrasing. We got you know what I mean. And then, the and then he, he was like, "Hey, I'm sorry. I'm gonna buy more nuts." So Joey now has the unlimited cheat code for yeah. unlimited nuts because now Nick's gonna keep buying the nuts for yeah. Joey because he Nick wouldn't need his own nuts. No. Nick needs to eat no. Joey's nuts. No, yeah. it has to be Joey, uh, look, Joey's possession. Joey, every, look, okay. <laughs> People <laughs> in this goddamn <laughs> office. Joey. People yeah, in this Jigsaw office. Gets your ass one day. <laughs> All your life, been eating Joey's nuts. <laughs> the worst of the worst of it is Greg because he hides snacks like a kid, like an only child. I can't imagine is. why he hides them. <laughs> I be, he knows I'm good for it. I'm good for this. It doesn't matter. Let's get back to the plot. Uh, Banks wants the case. Boz was his friend. Of course, Boz was the only one that like stood up for him when he got when he did the whole thing. And man, Chris Rock is a great actor. That's gonna happen here a lot. I put that in here every oh, time. I good. thought Chris Rock really, really yeah. angling for that okay. Oscar in this one. Banks heads to Boz's wife's house to pay his respects, but he runs into Teresa, his ex-wife, who of course will come back later in the story because that was an important beat to have here. Oh wait, she doesn't ever come back. This is the only time we see her. Uh, Boss's wife tells Weird. Banks there was a black SUV parked outside their house, but she didn't get the make. Boss argued with the person inside. Do we ever get the resolve, the resolution on that? Oh, Probably not. No. No. Okay. That was, that was just a dead end. One. At one point, she's like, "Yeah, there was a there was an SUV parked oh, out," and he goes, right. "Is there an Escalade or anything?" Uh, she goes, "Yeah." He goes, "I'll look into it," and I don't think we ever go back to that. Huh. No. That must have been a story throw that got cut out. Red herring. <laughs> must have oh, been. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Banks comes home and finds dun, 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 his father there waiting for him. His father's not just a cop, not just his father, but also his landlord, so he can just come in whenever he wants. And then they have a little discussion about how that's not legal. It doesn't now, matter. We saw the picture earlier, but like, I need to ask Andy and Nick, what was your reaction when you saw Samuel L. Jackson? Oh, I, it, I mean, when it was when it was pop when it popped up on the photo, I just thought like. The budget has to be all Chris Rock and Samuel Jackson. Like, there's no way that Samuel Jackson would agree to be in this movie. Because I feel like we don't see him in a whole lot other than Capital One commercials or Avengers stuff or Marvel <laughs> stuff. And for this to be like, because I remember Fredo last week or two weeks ago, whenever the last review we did was like, Fredo said, oh, there's that other actor that's in that movie. And I just... I thought it was going to be a Saw reference. I thought it was going to be fucking, who knows, person from Zep, one of these type of characters. To see Samuel Jackson, SLJ, in this movie, I was like, why is he, this man here? There's no way he's going to play an important role. You know, well, it you could have been anybody else. You, there are some deleted scenes where Samuel L. Jackson just goes around town buying things with his uh, with his Capital One. Oh, part. really? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird. That's crazy. Uh, I got excited because I was like, oh, clearly they got Samuel L. Jackson for a reason. They're obviously going to utilize him very like intricately in this plot. Maybe he's the bad guy. I don't know. Man, I'll tell you what, though. Uh, we'll get to it. There's a moment in this movie that perfectly... Yeah, fuck it. We'll talk about it right now. <clears throat> moment in this movie that perfectly encapsulates how bad this film is is when uh, later when he's trying to figure out where his dad is, he sits in the apartment and he remembers a moment where he came in and he found his dad, who is the current chief, arguing with Lieutenant Detective Angie about stuff, about him, you know, snitching on the guy. And he's like, you got to get out of here. He's like, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you tell me you were going to do this? He's like, I knew you would have stopped me, yada, yada. And then he storms out. But the flashback continues. The scene continues, even though the person whose perspective oh, we're flashbacking to yeah. is not in the fucking scene Wait, anymore. So I didn't fucking think about funny, that. you're I didn't right. Think and we get a that. whole moment where he bashes the guy, the the new, the, uh, the reporter's face, the and I was like, reporter. Chris Rock's not in the building anymore. <laughs> How does he know this happened? <laughs> but more importantly, oh, think funny. about that. More importantly, we saw. I don't know if this is rank two on backwards hats in the franchise. If you remember, John Kramer had. Oh, this is number one, dude. Hat. Chris Rock's oh, like young yeah. version of himself oh, with the backwards yeah. hat 
If Kevin, if you could look up just Chris Rock uh, backwards hat j or a spiral movie, it distracting is, doesn't do it justice. It is hell. What what is it that they thought that like it's it's so stereotypical? <laughs> Hello, fellow kids, like, dude. We had to pause the movie and have a discussion about <laughs> this scene. Like me and G were like, wait, wait, wait. Are, what are they trying to get across here? Because this is just bizarre. I mean, the question is, does it shave a couple years off? I thought they were going to put, like, put a fucking little propeller on the hat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, to, <laughs> like, to like make a little young look hair into, so like, Yeah, the fake goatee oh, was Lord. really, really bad. Oh, <laughs> man. That fake so goatee bad. was terrible. That was a, a really bad fake facial hair thing. They did the same thing John Kramer. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, D just says DG Mirror. That's why I'm like. Admitting. That's why I don't know which yeah. one was worse. Because, like, hey, let's make John Kramer not look like he's above the age of 75. But they gave John Kramer a skateboard. No, they did it. You're just making that up. You're this with yeah, you're you're the the me. You're you're confusing that with <laughs> Hello fellow teenagers. They should have. You imagine <laughs> Jigsaw We're making this a canon. We just rolled up to the book signing. <laughs> Let's, How yeah. else is he getting to the book signing? Jigsaw Come vaping. <laughs> <laughs> out of the side of his mouth. Uh, let's see. Back at the precinct, uh, they're all trying to figure out who killed Detective Top Hat, and Max's phone dies. So he borrows Zeke, and right here, I'm like, he's the bad guy. You don't borrow someone's phone in this world. Plug. Here it is. Wow. Oh, it is. That goatee Dang. is so bad. I think the goatee is more distracting than the hat. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to disagree with you, Joey. Because what oh, is the goatee Lord. CG though? No. Like, no. no. Okay. It's no. Fake. I think it's just a fake. It's just goatee. a really bad fake uh, little goatee. But I think the thing that's so distracting about the backwards hat is that, like, look, John Kramer's got a hoodie on. He's just having a nice little relaxed day out. But this is Chris Rock as a cop. In the 90s, dude. Also thinking, let me put on a backwards hat. When, like, when, like, when do you ever... It's not like this is, like, his casual wear, so he happens to have a backwards hat on. <laughs> he's wearing his cop uniform and also toss on a backwards hat. I mean, and also the way that he's wearing it, the way it's kind of just, like, rested on the back of his yeah, neck. Yeah, it's not covering his forehead at all. Oh, it's John so Kramer's bad. covering his entire forehead. Yeah, John Kramer Chris has... not touching his forehead. John <laughs> Kramer has the Ken Griffey Jr. backwards hat style. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, weird. Yes. At uh, next point, Marcus pulls up the old warehouse and approaches gun out. Detective Fitch and Kraus use a uh, use a gun store video surveillance to track down the tweaker Benny uh, from the sewers in the beginning of the movie. Fitch then steals a, a gun from the store owner, and oh, he's got sticky hands, got sticky fingers, right? He's always doing that kind of stuff. Fitch goes to find Benny, the tweaker. On behalf he, of the Metro Police, I want to thank you for your generosity. Yeah. He's got to say something cool. Good Lord. You got to say something Again, cool. Again, the writing can just be, it's so on the nose and it works when it's like, oh, the pig is representative of the pigs. Yeah. Cool. These lines, I'm like, come on, man. It's very comic booky. I'll tell you that. Uh, he goes to find Benny, uh, but, but he gets pig manned instead. Uh, he wakes up in, in a catcher's mask uh, with his fingers in steel cable finger traps. And, uh, and then we don't get any resolve from that. It just stops. And then Zeke heads home and encounters a DoorDash guy at his dad's house. So he lets himself in. And, Those uh, were really brutal, though. Like the, the finger. Oh, no, but oh, we'll the, get to there. We're going back. We're just, we just yeah, haven't yeah. seen it yet. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the brilliance uh, yeah. of this that movie. Is twist. We set it up, and then yeah. we'll get, we see the fingers, and then we go back. to the, Just making yeah. sure that there's no tension whatsoever in it. I know you want to see this man's fingers get ripped off. But you'll see that in three scenes from now. Do you think you got, like, here's the thing. Have you ever played with those finger cuffs? Yeah, the yeah. We all know uh, you Chinese just you, you put yeah the Chinese fingers. Cuffs. But you just push in, yeah, and you pull out right. That's one. Two. I don't think his feet were tethered to anything. I think he could have just jumped out of that tub at any given point. I mean, he did. Yeah, he did. Kind of like get up, and then and like then, walk over. But the thing started retracting. Yeah, only but it retracts when he bites down. So he could have just opened his mouth up and just jumped out of the tub and just waited for the timer to mm. finish. Now, granted, you feel like then, Pig Man's gonna come and just hit him over the fucking head yeah. with something because Pig Man's always there. Always. And by the way. Big man, yeah. no, no used to use out of the tub. <laughs> a much more, I guess, humane version of knocking people out. We're gonna call it cheese clothing. Yeah, wrapping people's faces in the cheese. And cloth. this first time ever. I mean, as far as we know, one man job. As far as you Big know, man and the voice and the traps and everything. It's all. Did anyone check on where Carrie Always is? We no. don't know. Mm -hmm. Good point. Maybe he's in England. Uh, let's see. Zeke heads home, and then he goes, "Oh, my dad's not here." So you would think a cop would know better than to leave his key on the door sill. Seems like a very big security risk, but it doesn't matter. He lets himself in. This is where we get that flashback where he couldn't possibly have known half the things that happened in it. Uh, Marcus, 
Brooke is the, breaks the nose of a news reporter who at first I'm like, is that the guy, the photographer from the first movie? But I try to look up his name and uh, who cares? He doesn't come back ever. That, that's another story that never comes. Another message arrived for Zeke. This one is a tiny little puppet and, and man, it sucks. They head to the scene. It looks so stupid. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, and they find a truck with a dead pig inside and another box inside all is all of Fitch's fingers and his badge. Uh, we have another flashback of a time that Fitch didn't back him up when he was requested, when he requested it and got shot. This is when he got shot. And then Samuel L. Jackson just having an awesome scene here where he's like, I'm going to figure out which one of you was closest and then I'm going to take this gun and I'm going to fucking shoot you with it. And it's a great scene. <laughs> and I'm like, this movie could have rocked. It could have fucking rocked. <laughs> no, it was awesome. It out there. Uh, we cut back to Fitch, and this is where uh, we know he's dead, but we see the trap on his full effect. And Andy, yeah, it's fucking horrifying when his fingers start getting pulled off. Yeah, yeah. the meat oh. effect was really gross looking. <sighs> very, very good. Uh, yeah, the, the just skin tearing from like the knuckles and stuff. It's such a slow pain. Yeah, because I just assumed that it would have been a. Oh, oh Jesus, oh. Kevin. She wants I, I some th- cottage th- cheese. It's not real, hey, guys. I thought it would have been a Kevin, cleaner wait, break, wait. but it look it reminded me of like when you pull weeds from the ground and like it goes a lot deeper. Uh, this yeah. goes way deeper than we could have ever have imagined. Questions on how that would even work. You just pull the skin off your fingers, probably. I don't think it would pull your fingers off. It would probably no. just it would probably just sleeve your fingers. Ugh. But like <laughs> it must have just been woven in his skin then? No, it's just it's the it's the tension of them. So the way yeah. those work is when you the more you pull them off, the, the tenser it gets because it's like a net around your finger. Oh, have you ever have you ever played with yeah? Cuffs? But I was I was focusing less on the net part and more of like the little clippy part. Oh, potentially maybe it is like kind of uh, zoomed in, but I I yeah, it's just that it's just oh, a net. Yeah. And so the idea Hold is on. that Kevin, yeah, what is this? What are we looking at? <laughs> I don't know what it looked like. I have no what's that, idea. What's that website? What's that say at the bottom of Dreams line? Time. Dreams. But why do they got the spiral? <laughs> Guys, Dreamstime.com. I don't know. This I don't ask like questions. A, somebody has some Googling. sort of something in traction. You know? No, that's Dreamstime. Dreams, time. Dreams your, Time's watermark your is there. Your wrist is fucking... definitely a lot longer than it should be, right? That's AD? a mannequin. Yeah, that's a dummy and or a person who's been dead for a while. I don't like this. That's freaky deaky. <laughs> but they look close to it, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. I think that no, is I think it. this is that's from it. the movie. No, that's yeah. it, Kevin. That's I think it's like, like a set yeah, photo. That's, or that's the shit. thing. But I don't know why it's attached to a a dummy of a golden girl. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Anyway, <laughs> Zeke and Max head to the meth house to bust, the, and they bust their way in using a very clever use of a dye pack, which he just happens to have. Mm-hmm. This whole thing is so weird. Where it's like the. Oh, we're going to put the bucket down and put the thing. I need the drugs to go out. It, it's just like such a weird setup. It's so convoluted. The, yeah. the building. Yeah. Uh, of course, Benny is dead. The dealer tells him he's dead, but somehow it relates to a AA meeting. Uh, so he goes, I forget how Pete gets involved in this, but he goes to confront his old partner, uh, Pete, who is the cop that he snitched on. Pete, who just brazenly. Yeah, sober in a, in a church, just kind of living his life. What is happening? This is weird. Living so in the church basement. We get a flashback. Of he's like, are you going? Like I'm at the door, I'm a cop at the door of, of at Tim Gaddy's house, and I'm like, Tim, are you going to snitch on Andy? Are you prepared to snitch on him? And the guy's like, Yeah, man, I'm prepared to snitch. And he just draws his gun and shoots him right there in front of in in front of the whole freaking neighborhood, right? And then he goes, Man, we were doing crazy shit, man. It was Article Eight, Article Eight. <laughs> and I looked up Article Eight. I don't think that has anything to do with anything. Let me look it up again. It has something to do with like liber- like your 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 property. Yeah, they were trying to say different. something, man. Article eight, respect yeah. for your private and family life. <laughs> that's what. That's all I could find. Yeah. That's all I could find. U.S. Article eight. Oh wait, maybe this is. I should. I should have scrolled one down. Oh. U.S. Article eight in investment securities. Nope. Nope. That's, that's not it. Either. Okay. So apparently there was some crazy lawless shit happening, and all the cops were running amok for the betterment. But then they all got. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's like, I'm not your guy, and that's cool. Uh, Zeke, Pete. Had an alibi for Thursday night and it involves Detective O'Brien that they keep talking. There's a lot of detectives in this. And it's very confusing because. Which is saying something considering how many detectives are in some of the other ones, too. Two. That you, looked, oh, yeah, that's true. But that all the other ones looked the same, I guess. Uh, that was the key problem with like Saw 3 and 4 when they introduced everybody else. But. He, uh, Zeke calls his dad again. He now, he's now starting to worry because his dad's not picking up. The next day, an even bigger uh, box shows up. At the station with a pig mask and a doll made of real skin. The note uh, accompanying it says, "Am I getting under your skin? Get it under your skin." So it's then, like, all right. Then walking into this like place and like the the meat locker and like the the way that the door kind of had like the plastic hanging stuff. I was like, "Oh, this feels like a saw movie yeah. for the first time in, a, in an hour." This feels like a Saw movie and like the, oh, getting under your skin. Like, cool. This felt like John Kramer esque more than any of the other things. 
I was like, all right, cool. I, not bad. And he flips it over. He sees the Charlie tattoo. So he assumes it's Max, uh, who is dead. So convoluted. I love it. I love the dumb shit. But like, what? This was what they went with. Like, yep. Also, tattooing someone after they've died doesn't look like that. I it's imagine. It's weird. Like, <laughs> well, it might because really... it wouldn't bleed, right? If you skinned it and then tattooed it, it would, pr- I mean, it would look fresh. Yeah. yeah would, I mean, I guess fresh. it would look like you just got, you just got a tattoo, right? It would Good be point. weird. It wouldn't look like it was an old tattoo. Let's just put it that way. But any detective worth his merit would be like, something's weird here. Yeah. But I mean, I guess if you got a box of skin, you might be a little, you might be a little uh, thrown off by that. Anyway, uh, let's see. When they head there, they find, uh, oh, they head to where uh, uh, the paint shop, sorry. He goes into the skin thing. <laughs> it's just so distracting. You know what I mean? It's no. like, he thinks he's being subtle. Audio listeners. So wobbly. Greg's- just cut it. Oh, He's wait, cut this weird the? testicle shaped what? fruit in, in two. Then what? he put a knife on the desk. Are we? Did you try any of this, Greg? Sour sauce? Did you see that, man. Sour sauce? Oh. Are we? Can we eat this? Have we Googled this? Can we eat it? Oh, no one said you could eat it, just to be clear. <laughs> no, at no point did anyone say you can eat the sour sauce. <laughs> Nick's just so ready to eat on content. He's like, fucking that weird <laughs> <laughs> testicles. Yeah, put it in my mouth. Eat, Fair enough. Never in front of me. Uh, <laughs> let's see. They, they, uh, oh, they found a little vial of, uh, of paint inside the dummy, which is from an old hobby shop that his dad used to go to. And so he's like, this shit. This is some prime saw bullshit. Yeah. Love that. It's a butcher shop now, uh, so they go there, and of course, they find a predator body. And of course, uh, for everyone, if you don't know, a predator body shall henceforth be known as a body that is strung up and skinned. Yes. So uh-huh. everyone understands. Yes. Now, technically, 100%. a predator body is upside down, but we'll, we'll make an allowance for that in this time. Um, oh, tight. There's a little mini player here, too. I was hoping we wouldn't do that. Uh, and then I wrote down, is that AOC? Because the, there's an actress in this that for a second I thought was AOC, and I never looked it up. Never. I didn't. I don't know who you're talking about, and I don't think so. Okay, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> that was not something that stood out to me. Mm, I, I guess it wasn't it her. What did you Google? Are you talking like Alexandra Ocasio Cortez? <laughs> I thought it was her for a second. I was like, did they just get her to do a quick like? It went fast. It was like yeah, eleven o'clock. Chris last Rock, night. Samuel Jackson. AOC. I mean, I thought maybe yeah. they could get her, but never mind. Cameo. You're gonna the cameo tri- right now. No, nope, oh. not her. Oh, no, no, no! I was saying, up did her she make page a cameo? On Cameo.com oh, to get a video. I'm trying to see if this was her or not. I'm probably wrong. Nope, definitely not her. Okay, we continue. Uh, Zeke tries to figure out the connection between Max and his father and the predator body. Angie gets a text from Marcus to go check out a cold case. Of course. So, go, so going back, I thought it was just so weird that like I was like weird at first that we don't see um, Max Detective. Uh, was it shank yeah um in his trap or whatever but sometimes you kind of see the aftermath of it but then even then like when we actually see like snippets of what he went through he's just being skinned it's like i was like there's no trap here the man's just being like gutted like a fish i was like what is happening no trap this guy's just a killer Oh, he's coming back. All right. Uh let's see. (laughs) Zeke heads to the officer uh down on third. Oh, sorry. To an officer who's down. Uh, oh no, there's a lot of cords. Uh, it's uh, but don't eat it because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Don't eat it. It could be. It could be deadly, right? I, mean, I don't know. It's like eating a blowfish. <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> what does it smell like? I like to play a game. <laughs> don't eat it. <laughs> don't you like to play a game? Can you tell me what it, it sounds smells like? A little like bit him? like. Do you know what the voice sounds like? Clement Street. Street. Like, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> wow. Do you know what the voice <laughs> sounds a little bit like? Do you remember the <laughs> the brother in Napoleon Dynamite? Mm-hmm. He's like, I love it. Oh, Kip. Kip. Yeah. Sounds it is like Kip. Kip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Not as much as you and me, but I love it. What was that? What was the it Always matter. and forever. Oh, yeah. That's great. Uh, let's see. Zeke has the office down a third. Doesn't matter. Zeke remembers another of Spiral's riddle, riddles. While you're looking for other bodies to drop, I'll take your head. Wait a minute. Head can mean different things. It can mean a literal head like the one on your body, or it could mean it could be the head of the class, like the classic 1980s sitcom starring Howard Hessman. That was for Tim. Anyway, Angie gets gassed Tim, and wakes up. What do you know up. about head of the class? <laughs> Off camera, Tim says nothing. Nothing. Uh, Angie gets gassed and wakes up with some spooky cloth over her face. She finds another cool mini tape. Man. 
This is really the best voice they could come up with, huh? Text to speech. Okay, Angie has a choice. She can either sever her own spine or get her face oh. melted off by hot wax. Of course, not much of a choice at all. She gets her face melted off by hot wax. Man, Chris Rock can really what act. What a weird trap to be like, mm, I'm going to, like, waterboarding isn't enough. Right. In this sense. They have to do it with hot wax. Yeah. I forget what the, the uh, analogy was here for why she was getting waxed. I think it was because she was looking the other way or something like that. What was it? She allowed all this stuff to happen, so we're going to cover your yeah, face with wax. I don't know. It's 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 thin. It's so bad. Uh, they go to the footage, of course, um, and they uh, they find out that one of it's been uh, some of the footage has been edited out by Pete, his old partner, who still still has access to the, the door system. was open and then it was closed. It's just like this, I hate this. Weird. Uh, Detective vest suit guy accuses Zeke's dad of being the killer, and Zeke loses his mind and screams in his car, and it's very edited. Uh, <laughs> Zeke then gets cheesecloth yeah. by Pigman. Marcus is still alive and working his way through a spiral-filled uh, warehouse. He finds a note that says, do you want to play a game, Chief Banks? And then he finds a cool pig puppet and then some cool pig heads and an old typewriter that surely has some significance. And then he gets cheesecloth by Pigman. He almost shoots him, though. Almost. Zeke wakes up to find another man hanging in front of him. The cool guy music starts playing as well. This is where we need Andy for the... I, f- I can't remember. Uh, yeah, that we song. were not singing the, the same thing, but it's okay. To it. That's on me. Uh, he realized. Let's see. Uh, he wait. He re- he realizes that his hand is chained to a pipe, and then he spots a hacksaw. And we're like, oh shit! Is oh. he gonna have to cut his own hand off because his hand is the one that that pointed to the cop that that he was able? And no, it turns out there's a bobby pin in front of him. He can just take the lock, which is great. Fun little comedic beat here. I, honestly, I appreciate it. The music playing. Yeah. Him get looking at the saw. The whole build up to this. I'm like, all right, y'all. It's a little on the nose in the wrong ways of like, you got to do the things, but like, I feel like they kind of earned it in a weird way. I enjoyed this. this, this, that, that was fun for me. I was like, oh, that's a cool little, little reversal. That's cool. Uh, what's not good though, is the next little riddle. This is, can you stand on the side? Can you stand on the sidelines? That's just as <laughs> absurd. I throw away the key. Uh, Lef- Le- what was the, What was the girl he loved in, in Napoleon Dynamite? LaFonda? LaFonda, yeah. LaFonda. <laughs> But this also I'm play some tether ball with this guy afterward. What the fuck are we doing here? <laughs> you also vaguely sound like the alien guy from Galaxy Quest too. Yeah, we're like astronauts. Never come up, on. Never surrender. <laughs> yeah, when we see the Galaxy <laughs> Quest wig, that's where we. You should not be here. <laughs> Those poor people. Doing Amanda so dirty. I Man, know. okay, oh, the trap kicks up and Pete, and then Pete gets a bunch of glass in him, and then he, and then Zeke oh, yeah. realizes, oh shit, the trash can in front of me must have the key to it, so he frees him, but then Pete's just dead. Can we also talk about the use of a trash can as like a shield? Because he uses it in like the least efficient way by like just propping it up on his back 10 movies in this is the least believable moment of all of them it's, it's like hard. first it's hard off to this trap fucking unhinged. unhinged like this guy just getting glass propelled at him at a thousand miles an hour is so intense like jigsaw the last movie they're in the grain shaft and like all the sharp things start falling and it's like mm-hmm. this is over the top but it is what it is this is like fuck you there's no getting out of this you're so fucked and the level to which his back is destroyed and i bad. can't believe they committed that hard okay. it was so violent so insane and then chris rock just grabs a fucking garbage can and like limply cut. chris rock defended himself with the trash can as a shield as well as the boys threw things at each other and saw one mm-hmm. oh, yeah. you know yeah. what i mean that it is a perfect analog bad. that's a perfect like- analog I don't know if I was going to defend myself from this, these glass shards, I would maybe maximize the area instead of using the smallest part of mm-hmm. the cylinder. Maybe I'd use the long part. Chris Rock is like, man, I don't really care enough. Clearly, I'm not gonna lie. I want to use them as a, as a shield. I'm like, look, I'm going to try and get you out of here. But you know, what I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you're, you're, you're meat shield. Meat shield, man. Here. I would put the trash can on me and I mean, run honestly, around like a ghost. Yeah, I probably would do that too. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not advisable, but I would. Do it. <laughs> I tell you what, Andy, if I'm sitting there and I'm watching you get slowly killed by getting ripped apart by a lot of glass, man, I'm enjoying that. <laughs> anyway, back to the, the plot. Zeke uh, walks up like walks up like 20 flights of stairs, and it's a spiral staircase. Whoa! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, of course, he walks up the stairs, which makes sense. Yeah. Because if you just saw this, why would you run out of the building? Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you walk up 20 flights of stairs? Yeah. 
Makes sense. rule of horror movies, you always run further into the house. Go up, never go Wild up. that he has glass just like coming out of his face. Love like it. Some fucking British Brutal. snake shit. Like, yeah. Crazy. Uh, and what does he find? <gasps> Max. Holy shit. Who could have seen that coming after Max borrowed his cell phone? Uh, Max, it turns out, was the son of the dude that Pete killed. His name was Charlie. He's like, Charlie was my father. I remember everything about my father. <laughs> <laughs> and Stop he goes, wait, I thought Charlie was your kid. And he goes, nope. I don't have a child. And just to rub that in, they show the, they, they, we get the, of course, the now iconic flashback mm -hmm. of terrible, we don't need this. Right. The baby crying, and, he, and then you hear, Pond 5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hear the audio watermark. <laughs> oh, God, that's funny. Uh, it all started, of course, that day. Max borrowed his cell phone, which was like, we see that. He texted the dad, then he blocked the dad's number and deleted all of I it. I didn't ask him to come down here. You did. You did. And it's a fucking wreck on him stealing his phone and calling him. The worst retcon moment ever. I didn't ask him to come down. Yeah, you did. It thought Are it was real fucking, smart. Yeah, yeah. Man. It is bad. Uh, Max wants him to team up with him to take out bad cops. Ma Zeke will identify him. Max will kill him. And he goes, I'll do that as long as my dad goes free. He goes, funny you should say that. Uh, he puts in a, a phony 911 call and then shoots five shots out in the air and then gives him the revolver with the last shot in it and then takes him to see his dad. And as he does that, he closes the door behind him and latches a little cable to it which, of course, is going to come in handy later. Mm -hmm. And this is what I, we see. I will say, though, I thought it was kind of cool, like the whole offer that Max had to Chris, where it was like, look, man, like, you tell me who the bad cops are, I'll deal with them. And I was like, again, I was like, that could have been something, or mm -hmm. at least like a story in this chapter of different varieties of people uh, but luckily, this was, is the only cool iteration we're getting of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, of course, when he comes in, he finds Mar Marcus Banks, Samuel L. Jackson, strung up like the marionette, bleeding out from multiple lines of IVs that are in his arm into uh, things. And he's like, look, here's how it's going to go. You've got he's going to bleed out in three minutes. The cops will be through that door in four minutes. You have your at this point, I'd be like this. But how long were we in there for? Were we in there for like 30 seconds longer than you thought? How do you know how much time is? Is there a clock somewhere that you know? That's the magic of Saw. And my journal will be done in three minutes. So. People wake up at the right exact the moment. exact right moment, Always. Joe. Uh, of course, the cops start coming in. He goes, they're going to come up in four minutes. You got three minutes. You can either shoot me or you can shoot that thing up there and, uh, and save your dad. To which I'd be like, I'm going to fucking shoot you. It's a target spiral. It's a spiral target. <laughs> they could have just made it a spiral. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, he is like, son, you got to make the right choice. And he's like, you always make the right choice. And, of course, he does. He shoots the spiral. Uh, he he downfalls uh, Samuel L. Jackson. And then Zeke attacks Max. And they start attacking as the cops start cutting through the door. And he's like, don't let him cut through the door. And then Samuel L. Jackson's <laughs> like, don't cut through the door. Don't cut through the door. I see a cable in my brain. I know that cable's going to do some crazy you shit. to die. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they, cut, <laughs> they cut through the cable uh, Sam L. Jackson goes right back up Into the marionette status so They stands up uh, The lights flood So they can't really see what's going on And at the same time A gun yeah. Pops out from his wrist Explain it Explain And then it. his Look hand The, the marionette Creed. cable yeah. Pull his hand up To point at the cops The cops are like Put and, it down but, Put it down In case we're, we're like Whoa what's, what's this a reference to Like what could this possibly be And then it cuts to the little pig marionette And I'm like Oh, thank oh right! You, thank you. I didn't understand what you That's were how saying. clever this is. Yes. Oh, yeah. there yeah. it is. Look at that. Little yes, look at that. Little piggy. <laughs> it's not even a real gun that pops out of his wrist, though, right? It's, just uh, it's like, like a, the barrels of a gun of some just, sort. I thought it was just like a tool to look like, hey, come get this guy. Like they purposely put the backlight on him to kind of obscure yeah. the vision. Yeah, the that was the point. Everything. Uh, this is the barrel. I think it was like the barrels of it. This could have fucking gun. rocked. Chris rocked. Uh, they blow him away. Uh, as Chris Rock uh, screams for them to stop, and then he looks over. What do he see? And he sees Max. Cap, can you give Nick the one, please? As Chris Rock is screaming because his father is dead, he looks over in the freight elevator as the doors close, and it starts to go down, and Max just looks at him and goes, Shh. <laughs> <laughs> And then... The credits, the credits and Savage 21 is rapping fucking yep. over <laughs> the goddamn <laughs> Saw theme. What a, uh, and that spiral. A weird movie. Yeah, it was a lot of interesting things being done here. It's one that like just near, didn't work near the end of development. You, you, everybody working on this movie had to have been looking at it like this is not worth the time right now. Like this was not worth any of the efforts that we had 
to try to make another Saw movie. You can't be happy with this as the product. <laughs> I just feel like, Andy, you and me in a room, five minutes, come up with a better Saw movie than this. And then I watch glass rip through your body. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, uh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm so happy that we got Saw 10 after this. Like, I'm happy that like we're back, baby. And mm -hmm. like to Joey's point, I do think Saw 10 would have ranked higher having seen Jigsaw and this and being like, oh, there is a magic to the old bullshit. And like, if you get it right, it could be a lot of fun. Uh, but let's let's get into some more ranking here. All right, it's time to rank the traps. <sighs> They don't rank them like we rank them. I mess up the notes, but it's okay. Get it, you know. So it's time to rank the traps. We choose one to represent this movie, and then we rank them against the other movies. Currently, number one, we have the rack from Saw Three. God. Number two, we have the needle pit from Saw Two. Number three, we we have the reverse bear trap from Saw One. Remember when number the four, traps were good. Blood pints, aka the bloody buddy system. In Saw 5. Number 5, we have A Pound of Flesh from Saw 6. Number 6, we have The Racist Rune Goldberg from Saw 3D. Number 7, Bloodboarding from Saw 10. <laughs> uh, number 8, we have The Scalping Chair in Saw 4. And then number 9, The Saw Tornado in Jigsaw. <laughs> Which I forgot about. So that shit stupid. sucked. <laughs> what, what's the trap? I think the here? finger trap trap for me was the one that sticks out. Yeah. And I think that one's just the most brutal. The tongue one's too comically dumb. And then the wax one is dumb i mean maybe the marionette i guess I, yeah i i would say the marionette because like, honestly like to me in a year if you ask me what traps were in this movie i don't think i'll be able to name a single one but i, I definitely agree. would not bring up the finger thing yeah the it's still, subway mm, shit maybe, maybe i'd be like oh that was it i feel like the samuel L. jackson marionette one i like that I it was a two-parter i will say you get the him with the blood and then the secondary coming back up with the gun thing. Sure. Okay. I'll buy that. I, I would vote for that. And I'd vote it dead last. Yeah. I say dead last. Very, well. very, yeah. Not memorable traps and or moments. What was the last one on the list? Currently? The saw tornado from Jigsaw. Oh. Yeah. Kind of equally. The scalp, yeah. Which one was that one? Oh, yeah. That was the blender. That was fun. I think they're all kind of equally it's forgettable. It's bad. But I'm pretty this one bad. Is all right, so I'm gonna put last place puppet SLJ spiral. Yeah. No, I know we're gonna vote on the twist next, mm -hmm. but I want you guys to think because I don't want you. Well, let's vote on the twist next, and then I'll read this. That Kevin sent me some very interesting stuff. Good. It's that pivotal moment. It's unpredictable. This twist. This twist. Unforgettable. A different tone than we're used to. Yeah, for that. fucking. Cool. I loved I just it. Yeah, going just on. Like the theme song was different. That was very uh, <laughs> Sugar Ray. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, number one, currently we have Saw Two tape on playback. Amanda is Jigsaw. The kids in the safe. Number two, Saw One. He's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just my favorite way to explain that twist. Oh, look. <laughs> Number three, Saw 3D. Dr. Gordon is an apprentice. Number four, Saw 3. It's Amanda's game. Jeff's the husband, and he has another game. Number five, Saw 10. Fake cancer treatment. The cure is a lie. Fate precedes her. <laughs> 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 Number six, Saw 6. Hoffman survived. It's his game. Amanda was there for his baby's death. <laughs> I like that we I like that we didn't clarify that his baby's death is not Hoffman. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Number seven, Saw Four. This happened at the same time as Saw Three, and Hoffman is the second apprentice. Number eight, Jigsaw, the Costco of twists. John Kramer's nephew killed by a faulty motorcycle. Thank you. Oh God. <laughs> Thank you. And number nine, Saw Five. Hoffman pulled off framing Strom. Where do we put? <sighs> Max was the killer. Max is the only yeah, twist. The rookie. The rookie killed, I would say dead last. Good, just because I saw this coming. I was yeah. like, there's no twist here. I know I this agree. guy's the bad guy. Dude, I didn't That's see so it coming, bad. but I wasn't even, I didn't even think it was cool. <laughs> like, yeah. The way it was revealed yeah. was pretty lame, too. He just walked into this giant abandoned room, and it's like, he's just right there sitting there. Yeah. So, spiral, dead last here. I'm just going to. Definitely forgettable. What should I explain it as for us to remember in a couple years? Max is Charlie. Charlie is Max. <laughs> Um, Max had fake baby sounds. Yeah, Max had fake baby sounds. Okay. Baby was a lie. Luke, I'm your father. Mm -hmm. Okay. The baby was a lie. Is fake great. We got there. <laughs> fake procedure. Yeah. Okay. He found the rookie. Floor. Max had fake baby sounds. The baby was a lie. Yeah. That's, that's that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Now, before we vote on the movies, uh -huh. I want to. Kevin did some research here. 
for approximately 10 seconds and came up with what Article 8 really does state. And I think this is important because I think this will really mm -hmm. shift how you guys perceive this movie. Oh, okay. Doing some research, Article 8 states, ex quote, except as otherwise provided, no member or members of such police force or department shall be fined, reprimanded, suspended, removed, or dismissed until written charges shall have been examined, heard, and investigated in such manner or procedure, practice, examination, and investigation as a board may be rules and regulations from time to time prescribed. This is taken from the New York state law, but it's probably the same throughout. So basically, cops can do whatever they want as long as it isn't written down or formally investigated. They can't get charged. So all the cops did these awful things, but nothing ever came of it because Marcus made sure to go through with all the specific procedures. This is why uh, such a big deal when Zeke turned to Pete because this meant actually having to follow through with the procedures uh, because we know Zeke generally wants to see bad guy cops get reprimanded. So if they uh, brushed this? it under, it's Kevin. If oh. it brushed under the table, he would have uh, he wouldn't have known and couldn't have been and made it a bigger deal. But this is all from a technical standpoint and just my understanding of theorizing. Ha ha ha. Does that change your perspective of this movie at all? <laughs> That was someone on Reddit, by the way. <laughs> I was copy and pasted it. Yeah. I was like, damn, Kevin's getting real philosophical about yeah. Spiral. <laughs> no, I mean, again, like, I, that stuff is there. The Mine subtext neither. Yeah, it doesn't change humanity. <laughs> there, but it just doesn't, like, add up. Like, this could have been great, and it just isn't. Like, I feel I ranking this, it it's last to me. Like, I, I just feel like giving, again, going back to Saw 1, we've always talked about, like, the idea is there. Like, judging people and like uh, putting them up to you know, like make your life worth it you have to go through this test based on bad things you did applying that to an entire precinct of cops that are bad is interesting and like could be very like there's a social commentary there that they can nail they just didn't do that here they went i think two-thirds of the way which is worse than going none of the way <laughs> like yeah. it's just weird this is last to me like this was not enjoyable and like the saw isms, the music, and the 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 pig man, and like all that stuff. Anytime they popped up, it felt like I was like, eh, all right. Instead of being like, let's fucking go. We yeah. even in Jigsaw, I was that. I was like, yo, this is dumb, but like, I'm here for it. I wasn't here for this one. Yeah. Anything that they did to try and nail or try and tie it to the greater franchise, I feel like they always got halfway and it never clicked. I think some of them for Jigsaw clicked but missed the mark and this just was kind of a disaster on all friends for me right up. it was terrible <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. From the beginning, it was just bad there's really not much if anything to like redeem this one adam at all it just felt so different so out of place and we've had some saw movies that felt very out of place and this one just felt like it just didn't belong in the saw franchise whatsoever yeah. Made me have an appreciation for Saw 3D, which is a statement I never thought I would ever Again, say. man, Saw 3D yeah. rising the ranks now. <laughs> <laughs> it's now third to last. <laughs> yeah. Andy, Nick, any... I mean, I, I just, yeah, this one <laughs> just did not hit for me, unfortunately. It, it, it does remind me of when they try to remake a beloved franchise and just get it completely wrong. Uh, and this, this missed the mark on a number of levels. Um, again, I... I no disrespect to Chris Rock or Samuel L. Jackson. Would love to see them as detective father and son in another movie, but please stay out of the spiral universe from now on. Thank you. Um, yeah, just kind of underwhelming and a really sad way for us to end the in review. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping for so bad it's uh, enjoyable in moments, and it was just kind of uh, an overall like snooze fest. Yeah. Yeah. I think we will return, and I'm hoping it'll be back to the fun as Saw 10 has showed us. I don't know when that'll be. I hope it's next year. I hope we get back on the fucking the, the train with this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Like, you know, the writers are allowed to start writing again from the strikes and stuff. I feel like that's the perfect amount of time to get a Saw movie. I think they probably, they probably already have the script. For I, thought, I, like, I thought yeah. someone's about to be like, I'm about to start writing. Like, like, <laughs> I, like, that's, I don't want to give them too much time. I think too much time gets you a spiral. I, give them just fucking pump the shit out let's yeah. see what happens <laughs> you know what bring I mean? back the annualization exactly maybe 10 million dollar budget maximum see what you could do yeah let's see easy, what happens. easy tobin bell come on bring back uh, always. let us know <laughs> yeah, in the comments that, below uh what you thought about this one how much you missed amanda's wig uh oh, honestly man. anything else you want to say in the comments below god i uh, missed donnie Wahlberg. Yeah, you're not jigsaw bitch 
Uh, but remember, we're returning to the MCU in review next week with the Marvels and then the following week with Loki season two uh, over on screencast. We're going to be doing our Loki uh, reaction tomorrow to uh, the penultimate episode, episode five. It'll be me and someone from IGN. We don't know yet who, but it'll be somebody fun because uh, a whole bunch of IGN people will be in the office tomorrow for our extra live stream. We're streaming for all day uh twitch.tv slash kind of funny games youtube.com slash kind of funny games it'll be kind of funny it'll be ign we've been doing crossovers all week we had a beyond ps i love you we had x cast uh, unlocked collab we don't have a nintendo podcast so i just went there to do theirs uh with nbc which was a lot of fun because the last time i was on nbc it was the year of luigi wow all right? yeah what, what a return <laughs> what a return everybody uh fredo where can people find you uh, you could find me over at youtube.com slash at dog bark show uh, doing just a lot of green screen sketch comedy right now with a bunch of my friends. You can go check that out, everyone. Fredo, thank you for hanging out with us these last couple weeks. We'll have Dude, to fun. bring you back for something else. I don't know what, but this will not be the last you see of Alfredo Diaz here on Kind of Funny. Thanks for having me. Till next time. Thank you for joining us, Alfredo, and everybody else. Goodbye, kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs>